weeks of love. The consequences of those intentions probably not aligning with with that love. Probably not what she expected. I don't know what she expected. We don't really talk anymore. But I know she loves me. And because I cannot but more importantly, I will not stop loving my mom. It gives me great comfort to know that my son cannot and will not stop loving me no matter how much I fuck up. And so, um... On Friday's show, I talked about I talked about being each other's keepers and how you know we need support. You know how depression is a prison to which we hold the key, except we never look for it. And so, <clears throat> you know, when you're depressed, you, you know, you have you have the ability to break free of that. And yeah, ultimately, you're the one that has to use the key. But if you can't think to look for it, you need someone to help you. And if you don't have someone to help you, how do you how do you deal with that you know and uh, one of the things that I said on that show was maybe I needed to stop looking to people valuable, flawed human beings for that support, for that help. And instead, maybe I needed to look to a power greater than myself. Whatever you want to call it, God, the universe source energy, the force. <laughs> Maybe that's what I needed to to look to. And so thinking about infinity and love and things that never end. Maybe, maybe I need to find strength in knowing that you never stop loving your mother. <laughs> your mother never stops loving you. And I know a lot of people who have major mommy issues, don't get me wrong. I know mothers can royally fuck up their kids. But the fact that there will always be a part there will always be a part of of a child that loves their mother no matter how weak or strong that love is that's infinite and I think I think that's the that's the that's the support system that I'm gonna have to rely on 
at least for a while. <laughs> Y'all, my life just... It's messed up right now. And so I know this isn't my usual happy-go-lucky podcast. And it hasn't been my usual happy-go-lucky podcast for... the past couple of shows, at least. <laughs> but, um... I'm sort of still sorting through the first law of Owen right now. <laughs> you know, first law, of the laws of Owen Kennedy. First law is if you give the world half a chance, it'll turn to shite. And the second law is if you've got the heart and the determination, sometimes you can clean up the shite. I'm still in the first law. I feel like everything is just falling down around my ears. I said to my psychiatrist on uh, on Thursday, I said I feel I feel a lot of the times like I'm being disemboweled, except without the you know comfort of knowing that there's an end in sight. <laughs> and I said I you know I know that's a really dark way of looking at this situation. I know that it's messed up and I and I'm not trying to say that I want to die. I don't. I don't. But man, I'm in a lot of pain. And I don't know when it's going to end. But I know that pain unlike love is finite. Pain is finite. Love is infinite. <sighs> it was really interesting. I was having a conversation a few weeks ago with... Um, all caps someone <laughs> about the universe I think he thought I was trying to argue I wasn't trying to argue I was trying to like debate and discuss and share ideas and I must have come off as argumentative but whatever but he kept talking about the observable universe and how the universe is finite and I was trying to argue well no that's you don't know just because this is what you can observe that doesn't mean that there isn't more. And um, and he said, no, 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 this is what science is, blah, 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 blah. And, and I went, okay, but what if? No, 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 this is what science is. Don't argue with the facts. And I'm like, okay, okay. And finally I did like back off and <laughs> just say, okay. <laughs> just putting some ideas out there. But <clears throat> I've been thinking about that off and on ever since. And especially uh, here recently, I saw a video on YouTube about um, some of the theories out there uh, regarding black holes and what's inside black holes in the universe. And one of the theories is that within a black hole is another universe. And so if that were to be true, then our universe could be inside a black hole. And that black hole would be inside another universe. And that universe could be inside a black hole, inside another universe. Like Russian nesting dolls, you know? Where does it end? That's, 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 that's the, that's the trick. And what if they like loop back around on themselves? That'd be really fucking weird, wouldn't it? But, um, you know, that's, 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 that's a mind-blowing concept. 
and it's hard for for my brain to fathom and and it and, and honestly it's not for my brain to fathom i'm sort of you know it's it's really interesting cuz i'm sort of i've always got my head in the clouds it seems and i'm always thinking about like some really big and abstract concepts and I often lose sight of, of the small minutia of day-to-day -day living, which is part of how I got into the current situation I'm in. But I mean, when you think about these big concepts, you know, about the universe and life, the universe and everything, you know, the problems you have now just don't really seem to matter but they do matter because you know I'm not out there trying to discover new universes I'm not you know Swiss Family Robinson or you know whatever the fuck lost in space I'm that's not me I'm not out in the universe I'm not out in space discovering new things and stuff I'm I'm here and I'm and and so the minutia for all intents and purposes is my whole universe and that's really depressing <laughs> that's really depressing that my whole universe is assembling pens and doing podcasts and trying to figure out how all caps someone feels about me and trying to not miss all caps fanboy in the meantime you know but then I then I think about you know the bigger picture and it's just why are these things so important? But then if you stop thinking about these things being important, you get into the mess that I'm in now that I can't really talk about publicly because it'll be used against me in court, I'm sure. Um, it's just, it doesn't make any sense to me. None of it makes sense. Like, what do you focus on? <laughs> what do you focus on? Because if the minutia isn't significant, what is significant? And if you focus on the universe, the big concepts, the minutia eats you up alive. I guess it's 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 a matter of just bouncing between the two. <laughs> you know, I I'm talk as I'm talking about this, I'm I'm thinking about in um uh the second Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy book. Um It's called Life the U not Life the Universe and everything. It's called The Restaurant at the End of the Universe. And um we learn about like the ultimate you know uh, punishment in the galaxy um i i forget what it's called they, but they they basically give you a sense of perspective and that's how they kill your soul <laughs> like you can kill a person's body but the only way to kill a person's soul is to to show them the, the their place in the universe and so they put you inside this machine, and this machine shows you just how insignificant you really are. And it, and, and, you know, because you're like a, a, a microscopic dot on a microscopic planet in a microscopic galaxy. And, you know, and on, oh my gosh, it's just like you're nothing compared to like all the vastness of the infinite universe and that's how they kill your soul it's 
Interestingly enough, this...